Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today you're going to get a real-time commentary. As you can see, I have an array of floral paintings that I just did. These are loose florals and they are so, so fast and easy to make. I call this my dot wiggle swipe repeat <laughs> method. <laughs> it's literally that and everything is made with a, a regular round watercolor brush. This is a size number four. Obviously the size of your flowers will be dictated by the size of the brush that you are going to use and I just happen to love this small size. Uh, this is a little bit bigger. I used a bigger brush so you can see the difference but I think they're just great um, to give away. They're very quick paintings. They're perfect for gifts. I actually framed one here. I went to the dollar store and I got a cheapy frame and uh, found this grayish mat in my stash although the frame came with a mat but it didn't really jive with the colors that I had and I think it looks fantastic. I think it would be a great gift to bring to someone or you can turn the, those into cards. I have made one that's a little bit smaller on a different kind of paper and these would make awesome card fronts. So let me show you how to do those. The paper I'm using is by Fabriano. It's their Artistico line, extra white, 140 pound, 100% uh, cotton, and this is the cold pressed uh, fine grain. So there's very little texture. For the beginning of this exercise, I'm going to give you an overall view because a lot of people like to see how I dip my brush in the paint as well as in the water. But then again, I'm going to zoom in because you'll lose the essence of this whole tutorial. So basically what I do is I start by loading up my brush. I have mixed orange with yellow and red and I'm just going to start my first flower. So which I want to have it about here. So I'm only going to put three dots of paint quite close to each other. I'm going to remove the excess paint on my brush, dip in my very dirty water, and then in my clean water. I don't want my brush to be soaking wet, but fairly wet. And I'm just going to, with the tip of my brush, expand the color. And I'm just really dabbing at it. I'm going to repeat the process here. Sometimes I wiggle the brush and it'll give me some kind of a fun effect. And I like to twist my paper around because I feel that it's easier for me to pull towards me than away from me. And that's all it is. You can also, if you want, and I'm gonna zoom in now, now that you know how I dip my brush and everything. I'm going to zoom in so that you can see that you can also remove the harsh edges by having a very clean, thirsty brush, which means that I have dabbed it on my paper towel here and just starting from the white, walking into the color. And as you can see, it softens up the edge as well. But when I do loose painting, I, I'm not aiming for perfectly blended and tapered edges. Uh, this is, um, I want this to be a little bit patchy, if I can explain it that way. Now I'm gonna do two more dots here and it's okay if the color walks into the other petals. Again, dip in the dirty water clean, damp, um, dab a little bit on my paper towel, and just by wiggling my brush, um, I can create the other petal. And that is all. <laughs> this is the flower, and I love the effect. The patchier, the better. Now, if you feel adventurous, what you can do is uh, dab it in a very contrasting color. Um, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of sepia, tiny, tiny bit, right? And this is gonna be super dark, but what I'm gonna do is touch the white part in the middle and eventually it'll grab onto each of the petals. And if the petals are wet enough, that brown is gonna walk into each of the petals, but resist the temptation to touch it at this point. I feel like I should be adding a little bit of opera pink to this mix just to make it a little bit bolder. So I'm gonna do one up here again. One, two, and three. Now I have this flower that's not completely dry at the bottom. It's all right. I don't mind. 
I'm just gonna kind of like circumvent. Um, I'm gonna work around the flower. I don't want the colors to mix really at this point. I'm gonna move that away a little bit. But again, um, I'm using kind of like the side of my brush to tap the color out and outwards. And then I'm gonna grab two more. And what I try to do when I add the dots is not touch the other petals. Um, it's nice to see a line in between the petals, but again, that's that could be a style. So if you prefer all the petals to touch, then by all means, do what your heart desires. Do what your style calls you to do. See how very patchy this is? I have one petal that's darker than the other and that's all good. Um, it's just, and again, I don't want to temper too much with the ends of the flower. I think it looks great like this. I'm going to grab a tiny bit again of sepia. And introduce it in the middle here. This one looks like it's going to travel a little bit more. That's probably because I have more water on my brush and less paint. I'm just going to grab, pick up a little bit more pigment. Ooh. Now this one's very pronounced and I think it's going to be awesome. I'm going to do a third flower here at the bottom. I'm going to dull down the color. Maybe add a little bit more opera pink and some water. And I'm getting kind of like this muted um, burgundy, I want to say. And I think it's going to look great with these two. So let me situate that one a little bit more towards the bottom. So again, three dots. Wiggle. <laughs> more wiggling. And once you get the hang of it, you can mass produce these uh, fairly quickly actually. I don't have a lot of pigment in this color, so I might have to reload. Sometimes an accident happens, especially when you're in a hurry, and you just have to go with the flow. So this one, I'm gonna push that out a little bit. It's a little bit the form. It's all right. It's all good. In the middle right here. and let that dry. In the meantime, what I can do is play with the stems. I'm going to start by the middle stem. I might even start off in the middle here. I want to make sure that the stem goes oops, a little too thick. I usually like my stems very thin, but we'll play with this. And this one I want it curved this way. And then this one. Uh, let's do it here. All right. And I like to fatten up the bottom of my stems. And again, keep it very simple. Don't be too fussy. Um, if you have like a little wiggly thing like this, this could be the beginning of a leaf. So I would leave it like that. Uh, 
And then I would just take my brush and just, oops, tap to create a very tiny leaf. And again, the brush I'm holding almost perpendicular to the paper. And then a little leaf right here and another one right here. How quick and simple is this? Now, at this point, you might want to reinforce the stems if you feel that they need reinforcing. Now it looks like the middle here is going to stay quite dark and what I would like to do maybe is introducing a little bit of white gouache or in this case I have white ink and I'm going to give it a little bit of drying with the heat gun. I have a little bit of ink left over from a previous project. I'm just going to mix it in. The ink I'm using is this one right here, Dr. PH Martin Pen White. It's quite opaque, but it's also reconstitutable with water. I'm not sure that's a word. And I'm just gonna dab, whoops. That kind of went wild, but it's okay. <laughs> We're gonna leave it like that. I'm just gonna dab the center. Now this one might benefit from having multiple dots in the middle just to make it a little bit more round of course the final touch <laughs> I want to know if you guessed it <laughs> of course gold now I have a funny story about that pale gold that I keep using uh, this week I've actually received an email from the company that manufactures that gold saying that um, they figured out um, that someone was giving them a push. <laughs> I'm not affiliated with them by any means, but uh, they sold out. And so they reached out to me and they said, uh, we figured out someone was giving us a push. And when we investigated, we found your YouTube channel. Uh, just to let you know that we ran out of stock, but uh, they have reordered a batch because these are kind of like uh, hen mold, I think. And, um, this is Kramer Pigments, uh, in case you don't know. They are a Germany uh, company, but they also have an office in New York City. And so they have restocked their gold through their German head office. And so a stock is coming. So there you go. I have now a nice array of either frames or card fronts. To give away when I have a need for it. I also I absolutely love the two tiny ones and of course the one that we made together and the one in the frame. So please do give this a try. Let me know how it went for you and if you want to share your artwork with me you can tag me on Instagram. I'm at Creation CC on all of my social media. Thank you so much for watching. I want to say a big thank you to my awesome patrons who are supporting my art over at Patreon. You guys are the best. Don't forget that I always leave the supplies list in the description of this video. So if you have any questions about the supplies that I've used, you can check out the description. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below and I will see you soon.